Hello everyone and welcome back to another Power Automate video. So in today's video we're going to look at a scenario I was dealing with earlier in the week and what it was is having a SharePoint list where you can see we've got a range of IDs in that first column however some of those IDs are appearing more than once so you can see for 103 and 104. Now what I want to do is in a scenario where there is a duplicate I want the oldest record to be marked as duplicate and I want the more recent or the most recent record to be marked as latest. Now, because, well, for the purpose of this video, um, you're probably thinking, oh, you could just do this off of the created column, which I completely agree with, and I'm sure that's probably what you would do. You'd space it on when the actual row item was created. However, for me, because I wanted to enforce um, the historical records, you can see I've created their test created column, of which I'm gonna be using that for my dates. So you can see for 103, the first record was on the 19th and the second was on the 20th. So that's why we'll be referencing that field. We're gonna build this with Power Automate. So the ultimate result will just be populating this duplicate status field. So what we'll do is jump straight into Power Automate. We'll go into Create and you could do this as a schedule. However, I'm just gonna do this as an instant Cloudflow and I'm gonna call this um, Tag Duplicates SharePoint list really trying to think on the spot there and uh, we're going to put this as a manual trigger a flow click on to create okay and then where we go we've got our trigger so the first thing we're going to do is we just need to get all of the items in that sharepoint list so we'll click on to add an action and go get items and there we go we can see sharepoint get items not to be confused with get item we need the get items and what we need to do here is select the site or SharePoint site, select the list name. So for us, it's going, or for me, it's going to be duplicate test. And that's all we need at this stage. I'm just going to rename this at the top here to get all items, just so we can see exactly what that's doing. Once we've got all of our items within our list here, what we need to do is apply to each. So we're going to loop, loop through every row in this, uh, or these return values, and apply some actions to that. So we'll do add action, and this time we'll do apply to each, which will give us a condition, so or control, sorry. So hit apply to each, and what we're gonna do is just select within this here, dynamic content, and we'll go to uh, get all items, the, the list of items from that output. Once you see it's added in there, and then we can come back into our flow. Now we're gonna add our first action within this apply to each. So let's click on the plus button and we're gonna do get items once again, get items. We're gonna to connect to the same list. So we've got analytics, uh, duplicate test. However, this time under advanced parameters, if you do the drop down there, I want to include filtered query or filter query and order by and then click to the side. So filter query. So what we want to do is, or and I'm trying to explain this without making it too long winded and confusing. What will happen in this apply to each, it'll go through each one of these rows. So they'll get to that first row and you can see our first row has an ID of 101. So what we want that to do is we then want to get all the items in that SharePoint list again. However, this time filtered to where the ID is 101. What that allows to do is, of course, identify if there are duplicate records, i.e. there's more than one row, or, well, and more importantly for us, is find out if there is more than one, what is the latest created date. In order to do that filtered view, we're going to do title, which is the name of my column. We then do EQ for equals, and then within single quote, we go into dynamic content, and from get all items, this is when it's important to have obviously named uh, each of your actions accordingly. We'll select title, and then we're gonna do a single quotation at the end there as well. And then um, in order by, I'm simply gonna use, uh, let's find my field, yep, so test created. So go back into there, test created, and I was gonna write DESC for descending. So. What it will do, it will get a filtered view of that list to just the title we're looking at, and it will then put everything in descending order, meaning that our latest record and therefore our latest date is gonna be in that first row. And what we can do is just call this get 
filtered items. Now we can see, I was going to say Power BI th or Power Automate thinks it knows what it's doing best. Uh, it probably does. However, it's popped our get filtered items within a for each. So I'm simply going to just click and drag get filtered items and put it back to where I want it. You can see what those dotted lines around the plus icon and then simply delete, right click, delete the for each that we had there. Great. So now that we've got our filtered view, what we can now do is we can do a calculation to work out what the latest date is for that particular ID. So to do that, I'm going to search for compose. So data operation compose. And within here, we're simply going to go into a, uh, a formula. And in here, I'm going to say it's a bit of a long formula. Um, so again, I won't try and digress and explain every aspect of what it's doing. I guess just know that follow this formula, tweak it slightly where needed, and you will be fine. So we want to do the outputs, and in single quotes, we're gonna go get filtered items. So simply rename, or the same name as you've got here for get filtered items. As you probably noticed, I've put everything as like one word, so no spaces. Uh, that's because if there was spaces, you'd need to remember to replace those spaces with underscores, and I think, Keeping it all one word is just sometimes just a lot simpler. So once we've got, got uh, get filtered items, at the end here, I'm going to do a question mark and then in square brackets and single quotes, I'm going to write the word body. At the end of that, we'll do a quote, another question, another square bracket, another single quotations, but this time with the word value. We'll then do a zero. We'll then do another question mark and then our last brackets, single quotations, test created. Now simply what that's doing is it's looking at the, the output, summarized by these two bits here, the body and value of our get filtered items. It's obviously it'll expect there to be like many or multiple potentially multiple rows. So what it's doing is we're using the number zero here to indicate we want position zero or otherwise referred to as the first row of that data. So we're only looking at one row and we only want to look at the field test created within that first row. So that's allowing us to now obviously capture what our latest date is for each ID. Once we've entered that, we can click on to add, and then what we'll do is just change Mac, uh, compose to max date, like so. We'll then continue to add another action, and this time it's gonna be another apply to each. Uh, apply to each and we will then do into here the output this time of the get filtered items like so and then within our new apply to each number one then here we'll do a condition uh, yes we can see condition here right so what's going to happen again sorry to try and reiterate so we've We've got our filtered lists all to the same ID here. We're then getting our max date for that specific ID. And then in this apply to each, what's gonna happen is it's gonna loop through all of these rows, which are the same ID, and it's gonna do this condition. So if the, um, in get filter rows, if the test created date is, let me do it, is less than, the dynamic content, the max date, then we know it's an old record, else obviously it's latest. So what we can do here is, ah, so let's just click and drag our condition outside of that for each once again, and delete that for each. So in the condition that the test grade is less than our max date, then we know we've got to mark that as a duplicate. So we'll go into our true um, action, and here we'll go update item, uh, SharePoint update item. Now I need to select our list, or not list, sorry, our site. Now we can select our list, which will be duplicate test. The ID, we need to get this from our get filtered items ID, just there. And then in our advanced parameters, we'll go down to duplicate status. And the duplicate status here for us will be duplicate because let's say the, the test created date for this particular scenario is gonna be less than our max, so it's a duplicate. However, if it's not less than, 
we can then go another update item here. However, this is going to be in the scenario of it's the criteria is not met, it's false. Update item, show analytics site, list, duplicate test, ID, dynamic content from get filtered items, advanced parameters, duplicate status. This one's going to be latest, like so. And there we go, I think that's the entirety of our flow. So just to try and walk that through once again, manually trigger, trigger the flow, we'll get all of our items from a SharePoint. We'll loop through all of our get all items. So we go one row at a time. And what we're gonna do is take the ID for the row that we're looking at. We'll then filter the SharePoint list to again, just that ID. That way we can put it in descending order. We can get the max uh, test creator date for that particular ID. And then where there's multiple scenarios for that ID, we can apply some conditioning. So if the um, ID, although if the test creator date is less than our known max for that ID, we want to mark it as duplicate, else we're going to mark it as latest. And once again, I can see it's put our four eaches in here. So I'm going to do click and drag our update item, delete our four each there. And again, drag that one up there and delete our four each here. I did think it was starting to look quite busy or busier than I expected. And that is our final flow. So just to repeat that, sorry, condition. If um, test created date for the item is less than our max, we're gonna update it to show duplicate. If it's not less than, so it's equal to or greater than, but it won't be greater than, uh, then we'll update it to show latest. And that is the entirety of our flow. So uh, those of you more familiar with um, Power Automate are probably thinking, well, we could probably add a variable here. So rather than doing update item twice, you can add a variable in here to set that variable and then just do the single update item at the bottom. Yeah, you definitely could do that. And that's probably what I'd do normally. However, for those maybe, this is maybe one of the earlier flows that you're trying to do, just wanted to repeat some steps that hopefully it just it beds in a bit better for you as well. And again, hopefully makes some sense. So let's click on to save. See if we get any errors or warnings. So no errors found. However, yes, we do get one advisory warning about this get all items that doesn't have a limiting folder parameter. Uh, I believe it's just because we're absorbing the entire SharePoint list, albeit small in our scenario. So Power Automate is just telling us that we we could probably optimize that somewhat. Nonetheless, not a problem. We'll click on to just test. Let's just quickly go to our analytics list. Just remind ourselves that column is currently blank. Let's go to test flow, test. Oh, it wants me to sign in, that's fine. Continue, run flow, done. And then we should see this to start to work. Yeah, we can see the word around. Uh, if it does take it shouldn't take too long, but if it does, I might just pause the video and then resume once it's completed. But yeah, we can see it's gradually working through. Okay, so then apply to each, done the conditions, updated. Great, yeah, your, your flow has run successfully. Great, looks all looks good. Let's go to our analytics list, or duplicate test list even. Let's refresh that page. and we can see the flow has worked as required. So for records or IDs that only appear once, 10102, you can see the latest. However, for 103, we can see our latest date is the 20th, so that one's been marked as latest. However, the record created the day before has been marked duplicate, and likewise, you'll see that for 104. So the records created on the 18th and 19th are duplicate. The latest record on the 20th has been marked as the latest. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please don't forget to give the video a like. It's not only greatly appreciated by me and shows me the content that you'd like to see more of, but it does help that all important YouTube algorithm. If you have any questions about this video, please just drop them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.